Good morning. Well, I'm out here uh, in the state forest and uh, doing a little fishing and camping. And I thought I'd uh, give you an update. Dave Canterbury has been doing a, a series in the spirit of Nesmet, um, which I've read Nesmet's book, uh, I don't know, about three, four times, maybe five. Who counts? It's it's a good read. Um, I'm cooking. Let's see if I can get it in the... In the phone there. I'm cooking breakfast is while I'm doing this. Well, Nesbeth wrote in his book that he had a knapsack and I'm not sure if his, he uh, weighed the knapsack and the haversack. He calls it a ditty bag. Um, 27 pounds Two days uh, worth of food. Well, I uh, I hit the uh, 27 pounds less the water. I do carry water. Um, so, anyways, I've got my. All shellac or whatever you want to call it. I might pronounce it wrong. But anyways, I uh, I come out here. Uh, it's it. Like I said, I think it's it's uh, April 16th. It was supposed to rain and turn to snow. Well, I don't know if it snowed, but it rained and it froze on the tent. I don't know if you can see that. It's starting to warm up a little bit, so it's... This is my new tent. Um, I haven't talked to the maker of this tent yet. Um, We did email each other. Uh, what a good little tent. I'm going to be taking this on the Appalachian Trail to finish up. Because the other tent I have is just... If it's a hard rain, I get wet. And uh, the rain actually goes through the material. It's a, it's a lighter weight weave. It's a two-pound tent. Excuse me. Uh, this is a two pound tent uh, uses either a stick or a trekking pole or you can tie it and throw it over a limb use a rope so you don't need a pole and uh, that's kind of what I wanted to do I wanted to kind of lighten up and simplify my kit and uh, yeah, I've got bubbles and uh, now I can lighten my kit up a little bit more by uh, bringing my titanium uh, pot and cup but I'm kind of doing this uh, a little uh, semi-traditional canteen cup uh, in fact I got two of those in my Kuska and uh, of course I have silverware where Nesbitt would, would use uh, a fork stick he take uh, something like this probably beech or poplar and he cut it down make a fork or maybe carry a wire fork 
I think he, he says in his book he carries a wire fork. Um, I do carry a cutter reset, stainless steel. Uh, I don't have my titanium sport. Uh, I was watching uh, Corporal Kelly and he had uh, spotlighted this tent and the uh, sleeping pad and uh, I bought one of those Kermits and I can't keep it under me. It leaks off. I think I got developed a hole the last time I was out on on the trail and uh, last January when I left down Georgia it was it was fairly warm it was some cold days uh, but it got colder we got snow and uh, well anyways I'm gonna roar and boil I like coffee uh, bags. Was a little bit longer and uh, yeah I, uh, I eat oatmeal and uh, coffee for breakfast uh, once in a while I'll indulge myself uh, I'll bring bacon and eggs on on the short trips and uh, Out my stove, save fuel. Yeah, um, and Nesmic didn't have a uh, a Trianga, or however you pronounce it, uh, alcohol stove. He used wood, so I could I could literally, if I wanted to take the time to build fires. I could go, you know, uh, you know, I could build fire in the morning and, and, and lunch and stuff. I don't know, did that come out? Yeah, there, there's a, that was my fire last night. I, uh, put some water on it. I'm going to check it make sure it's out before I scatter the ashes and move the stones. And uh, So anyways, I did, other than my fishing kit, my collapsible fishing rod and my uh, creel. Well, it's not a creel, it's just a, a, uh, a bag with my lures in it, spinners and and such so anyways uh, that's my my update on my uh, Nesbeth kit um, I do like to use the uh, canteen stove and the canteen cup to cook out of
I've been doing using that for years. Except mine was Army. This is the Pathfinder uh, canteen cup, and other than this little one that's a Swiss. I generally carry it in my haversack, but uh, I hate to eat in front of you, but I'm hungry and I'm cold. I'm not cold, cold. My fingers are cold. As you can see, I got gloves on. But I'll warm up here in a little bit, get moving, and start packing up. Going up the trick fishing. And I'm gonna I'll probably stay out again tonight because I have two days food. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I didn't didn't show you my my little frying pan for uh, to fry my spam. Uh, but uh, yeah, I yeah, uh, pretty happy with it because I'll be uh, using this. Uh, Hidden Woodsman Day Rock and this kit on hunts and stuff. I'm retired, so I can slip away as much as I want now, other than the honeydew list. <laughs> My wife always has a long list of that. Well, why? I thought you were going to do this, and I thought you were going to do that. Well, we didn't have the money, and besides, I didn't get to it yet. Uh, but, of course, I've been on the Appalachian Trail, and uh, since this virus is going on, and they shut the trail down, or I'd be out finishing up, because I didn't get to finish last year, I'm going to finish the trail up this year, hopefully. Um, I read I'm not opening Baxter up till June something. So, if they open the trail up soon, I'll run down and finish Maryland and Tennessee up. And... Uh, I should, if they open it up in June, I can run up to New Hampshire and finish New Hampshire up. And uh, sorry, I'm I don't have a, a little do flicky to, to hold the, the phone. that I might want another uh, cup of coffee. I can I can get a weak cup of coffee. I'm sorry about my finger. I can get a weak cup of coffee out of one so I can get like uh, two cups of coffee out of one coffee bag. I don't have to have mine super strong. I like strong coffee but First one's strong, the second one can be a little weaker. Get the old caffeine in, get the old motor running. So, anyways, thought I'd update you. Because I, uh, do uh, I don't spring goblin hunt but I do fish but uh, the stock trout 
they, I don't think they stalked as well as they did in the normal season when the guys can get out and help stalk uh, the fish commission. Of course, the fish commission and the game commission here in Pennsylvania, uh, they need to get on the stick and actually do the job. Uh, they're falling down, they want more money, they say they don't have, have the funds, but yet, uh, they're short cheating the, the sportsmen. I mean, I'm going to be, since I'm retired, I'm going to be hunting around to see if I can find some more native streams. And hopefully take my tent and camp out. Um, I'm very critical of the Fish Commission and the Game Commission. Um, they say there's too many deer. Uh, I walked down through the woods, didn't, didn't kick a deer out of bed coming down here last night. Uh, but I did have a deer come down and visit me last night. I heard it snorting. Of course, it could have been more than one. I didn't crawl out of a sleeping bag and, and uh, shine my headlight, my headlamp. Uh, I, uh, it's not that powerful. I don't need a real powerful light. I don't need any trouble out of the game commission thinking I'm jack lighting. In fact, uh, the only thing I have is my axe, my hand axe, my knife. Well, I even got a couple pocket knives and my bow saw. And uh, I don't even have a, a firearm with me. I just don't feel the need. Uh, I generally carry a pistol, but, you know, just as in case a black bear comes down. But I haven't had any problems with black bears here. And they're here. I've seen them. Uh, in fact, uh, on out that way, uh, I was out a few years ago uh, scouting for deer for bow season and I uh, ran into a black bear he seen me he went the other way and I went kept going my way and in fact I did uh, stay out that night and uh, I uh, bear bag my food just in case he was coming around poking around but he didn't he didn't bother me he didn't come back around uh, the difference between I had to get a either carver uh, kuska big enough or buy a kuska that's bigger uh, do kind of miss my titanium coffee cup because it does give me a bigger cup of uh, coffee. And uh, I mean, I like the the Kuska because it's kind of a little bit more uh, woodsy. So, well, get out there in the woods, do this kind of stuff. Uh, I know uh, there's two of my viewers uh, 
said, well, we were, I was on the Appalachian Trail and I was in Pennsylvania and he said, we were talking over the fire. And he said, uh, I said, oh yeah, I do the, the bushcrafting and stuff. And he says, can a guy use a wool blanket? I said, yeah, I have, except I'm a roller. And I roll and I don't care if I do the taco fold or do the bedroll fold. I always come out of that uh, wool blanket. And uh, now one thing I have done is taken my whoopee and a wool blanket. And of course, my one whoopee, I uh, put uh, shock cord on the ends and snaps on it. And I'll do the taco flip. And then I'll reach up and I'll snap the the uh, sides and tie them. Because even when I'm rolling around, I'll pop the the uh, the snaps so the the strings on the wooby helps keep it together. And uh, I'll I'll sleep that way uh, pretty comfortably. But uh, generally, I like a sleeping bag because of the way I roll. I use mummy bag, and I do have the old rectangle type. Uh, uh, my summer bag, it's a rectangle, but it has a drawstring. Like uh, I was up in New York, and uh, I didn't even want to use my tent. And I stayed in a shelter because it was supposed to rain. and. And Nana, a uh, 70-some-year-old lady, uh, was hiking the Appalachian Trail, and she was traveling with me. I said about, uh, I want to sleep in the shelter, and she wanted to sleep in the shelter, too. And she wasn't going to use her hammock, and uh, I'm dunking my coffee bag strength because I uh, want to drink a warm cup of coffee here Throw that in my trash bag. Yeah, see, it's uh, it's not strong, but I drank worse coffee. Ah, something warm in your belly. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, back when I was a scout, we didn't have sleeping bags. We had whatever we could get. If we could borrow a sleeping bag, we would, we would, but not all the time we could. So you do use a wool blanket, and uh, sleeping bags were great, but they were bulky. Uh, My sleeping bag, it rolls up, uh, well, I don't even roll it anymore. I stuff it in my sleeping bag. Plus, I uh, stuff my Sea uh, to Summit sleeping bag liner, and I have a goose down throw, too. And that goes in uh, the Hidden Woodsman in the bottom of the bag. And, uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, my... Uh, I carry a little tarp and a 
in a uh, one of those Pathfinder uh, sports blankets, the newer ones. Uh, I use that. Sometimes I just use that as a uh, a shelter or my poncho or you know the, the mixture of the two but if it's raining and stuff and I want kind of a kitchen I'll take the sports blanket and, and pitch a lean-to or a semi-lean-to and uh, get out of the rain and I can cook you know with my transit I don't have to worry about sparks and uh, set neat under under it uh, so I, uh, I have, I'm all equipped, uh, I, uh, so I can go lighter, I don't have to take the, the tent, I can use a, a sports blanket and, uh, a tarp and throw my uh, my new pad out, sleeping bag, and or uh, will be and sleep under it. I've I've slept up here in these woods in deer season with the sports blanket and my zero degree mummy bag for the first day of deer season, and uh, instead of taking a tent. And, uh, yeah, I've done that. I'm, I don't have to have a tent, but the tent's nice and the wind's blowing and it's raining. That sun's starting to come up and I know it's 8 o'clock and I haven't broke camp yet. So I'm behind the eight ball, but I wanted to film this. Uh... If you got any questions about what I carry in my kit, I did put some pictures up on Instagram and uh, Facebook of what I had in that uh, Hidden Woodsman Day Rock. Uh, but if you if you want to ask me a, a question about a specific piece of gear, feel free. Write in the comments. I will get back to you uh, before I leave to go on my next little adventure. Uh, it was pretty nice in there. I had uh, lit the candle lantern and uh, zipped up and it warmed the tent up a little bit. I guess if I burned it a little longer, it would have uh, warmed up even a little bit more. But it was, I was sitting there goofing off last night in the tent, and it felt good. I didn't burn it all night, because those Unico uh, candles will only burn six hours. But uh, I have burned them all night to, to supplement the heat in a shelter. Uh, Especially a Quincy. Uh, burn a candle in that, it brings brings a Quincy up to about 29 degrees. And uh, when it's minus degrees, 29 degrees is pretty nice. You feel like yeah, you're in actually, uh, you know, of course you got your woolies on and stuff but uh yeah 29 degrees when it's below zero uh, is warm uh, of course when you're out in it all day in, in sub-zero weather you you crawl into a quid and z and then light a, a, a candle and, and warms up to 29 degrees uh, yeah that feels that feels warm and uh, it's all up here but it's warm, and you can survive. Uh, you know, I've tented in zero weather, and uh, I wouldn't be afraid to tent in that in zero weather. Although I might 
pulled that, that down. I left that. Of course, I had my stuff piled up there, but it gave me some airflow so that uh, it wouldn't sweat. There was no uh, frost on the inside of the tent this morning, so I knew I had enough airflow. Uh, good little one-man tent. It's a heck of a lot lighter than a, a uh, Lavu. I wanted a Lavu, and I should have bought it when I, I could have got one for very cheap. Now they're more expensive, and and for what I paid for this, I could have paid for a Lavu, but this is a two pound. Uh, I have my German Flechter uh, shelter half uh, poncho set, and they're heavy. I, I dearly love it because, well, you see, I got my German Vortex Park on because of the, I, I, I hunt in this, and uh, I like the pattern. It blends in well. Uh, and I do take the, the, uh, German pup tent out. It's warmer than than the nylon, and, you, and I put the candle lantern in there. And it gets toasty, and uh, but again, it's heavy. On a short trip, yeah, I'll fasten it to, to the day ruck, but then I'm pushing 40 pounds, or I put it in the uh, deep woods ruck. Uh, where I wouldn't mind the weight. Uh, with the day ruck, you got to be uh, very, very weight conscious because you don't want you don't want uh, 40 pound on on in that day ruck. Yeah, I mean I, it's comfortable, but it's still 40 pounds, and it, it is different. The handle is different when you're going over rocks and stuff. Uh, it doesn't have a hip belt. Uh, if that's one thing I would say, suggest to to uh, Malcolm is I'd put a hip belt on that, uh, and I'd move the, the loops on the top flap. I'd move them down a little bit towards the buckles, just a little bit. Uh, I know if you were packing real light, like and you just wanted to put your coat on, it would it would hang hang down more and kind of pull you back. I think the reason why you put it up was if you strapped your coat to it, uh, it would be closer to your shoulders. 